Well, for our last conversation, and it's gone by really quickly today, uh, we're turning to a view from the White House and the role and responsibility of government and media to ensure a healthy democracy. Back from a busy week of global travel with President Biden, please welcome to the stage White House Press Secretary, Corinne Jean-Pierre, and joining her in conversation, Semaphore's Executive Editor, Gina Chua. Gina, over to you. Well, thank you for joining us. I had to remember where to sit. Hi, everybody. Yes, it's complicated instructions. The yes. far chair, the near <laughs> chair. It's all... Let's talk about you. Ooh. So you're the first black and first openly LGBT person to be the White House press secretary. What took so long? Why did it take so long? Well, first, hi, everybody. Thanks for being out here on a Friday, a Friday <laughs> evening. Um, I appreciate you all being here. Am I, this is too loud. Is this okay? They'll okay. fix it. Um, <clears throat> why did it take so long? Yeah. I can't answer that question. What I can answer is why it's important to have someone like President Biden in the administration. And I say this because me being at that podium was very purposeful. Mm -hmm. It was a decision that he made. Uh, it was an important decision to him as to who he believes has his voice, but also represents the American people. And it was, when you have that type of thoughtful thinking and idea of what you want your administration to look like and be, I think that's important. And I think it's important um, well, we talk about um, getting out there, people getting out there, making their voices heard, and 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 exercising their constitutional right, right to the sacred right to vote. I think all of those things matter, right? As you as you look at the way he has built his administration, and again, very purposeful, very thoughtful, very purposeful, and I and I am grateful. I always, while today was a long day, it's been a long. 20 months, <laughs> very long. Um, I always remind myself how privileged and honored I am uh, to be standing at that podium every day, to be traveling on Air Force One, to be on Marine One, to be sitting in the Oval Office and briefing the president or being part of a meeting. And so this is something that I just carry with myself all the time. It is a privilege, it is an honor, and I try to give it the respect uh, that I can every day. Let me get back to that a little bit about the voice and everything, but you just talked about your long day. <laughs> yes. And everybody knows you have an insane day, but I'd love to hear a little more. When does your day start? How do you get through all this? So, um, I'm trying to think. So this, this, this week is a little off because we were, um, we were in North Africa and Egypt, in Egypt for COP27. Then we went to Cambodia for our US ASEAN um, and East Asia Summit, so we did that. And then we went to Bali for the very consequential meeting that the president had with President Xi and also G20. And so we just got back. I can't even remember, today's Friday. It's Friday. We got you can back. sleep in tomorrow. We got back, I think, on midnight on Thursday. Um, and we had left for about, we left the Thursday prior. So it's been a long, it's been a long week. But normally, outside of traveling, my days, I start, I wake up about 3.30, 3.45 in the morning. Um, I go through all of like the, the evening network news. Um, I start kind of reading the paper, you know, all of the, the wires. You guys, congratulations. Uh, the tip sheets. Um, and it just goes on from there. There are some, there's some podcasts I like to listen to. So there is this probably two hour process of my day. And then I leave my house, I don't know, around six ish. I go to work at, by 6.30. And then what's nice about it is, I'm a morning person, as you can see. But as, what's nice about it is, I'm in the office by myself, unless my uh, 
our chief of staff, my assistant Robbie, is there, and I'm like, oh, Robbie was my my pe my piece of mind. He's probably laughing behind uh, behind the wall here, but I have about 30 minutes to myself, some silence where I get to um, kind of get get my head together for the day. My first meeting is at 7:30. I have one at 7:45, and one at 8 o'clock. I have one at 8:20, uh, and then the prep starts. The prep process starts for um, the podium. I'm so it already. is, yeah, it is a long day, and um, and then I, I'm home. I try to get home in time for, for my daughter yep. before she gets to bed. And you do all this without coffee? Without coffee? No, I don't drink coffee. Okay, well, that's a, that's a prize I've, right I've, there. I've, it's, it's, not, it's not anything that I miss, because I've never, it's not every, ever anything that I consumed. So let me come back to your... No. your, your your notion about President Biden and, yeah. and you being the voice and, and the representative. Why doesn't the president give more interviews? He's given far fewer interviews yeah. than, than everybody else. What's the issue? Shouldn't it be his voice? Shouldn't he be selling his policies? You know, I would say that, and I, I get the question, I would say that the president is out there almost every day and he is talking about the issues that matter to the American people, whether it, today he talked about the economy, he talked about inflation, and talked about lowering costs for the American people and all the work that we've done. Uh, and, and many times he takes questions from, uh, from the pool, the White House press corps, when he is in front of them. He, they shout questions, he takes them, and, um, and he's always willing to do that. He's always willing to, to have that back and forth. When we were, when we were in Asia, he did, I'm trying to think, he did a press conference. He was in, the, in front of the press about twice uh, and took questions. You know, I think it's just been a busy 20 months and it's been, we've just been moving and moving and moving. This is a president who has taken such historical action and has done so much, more than any, easily argue, more than any modern day president. Um, but he'll, you know, we'll, we have more, a lot more time. We will continue to do interviews. We would love so. to be, we, well, we'd love to be one of those people. Yeah, so, there's something well, weird happening. I know, it is. This is, I, um, They're giving us Okay, wireless. they've oh, given, you. They've, they've given up. Okay. Yeah. But no, <laughs> uh, but, but I, I do want to, he, he, um, he will do a lot more interviews. It's just been, this has been an unprecedented 20 months and he'll definitely get out there and do more interviews Which for sure. Put us on the list. I, I know, I hear you. Right at the front. You. Oh, oh, just skip you right to the yeah, top. Well, okay, so, gotcha. What media does he like? What does he consume? Uh, <laughs> uh, who, does he, who does he hang out with? We know he had the off the record meal with Tom Friedman and, and can we get one of those? And we'll, <laughs> Uh, can we have one of those where, where we can only write about the we'll simple we'll chocolate see. milkshake? We'll see. I mean, look, he consumes a he consumes a lot of a lot of news. Um, he reads, you know, he reads he reads the papers. Uh, he turns on, you know, it turn turns on the nightly news, evening news, and and watches that. Uh, he watches, you know, cable in the morning um, as he's getting himself ready to come come over to to the Oval Office. Uh, he definitely has his finger on the pulse. I, you know, I see him every day and talk through what's out there in the press and what's on people's minds. And he's pretty much has a good sense already of what's out there, what's being discussed. So the first lady gave an interview to Newsmax, <coughs> and you know, there's a there's a raging debate, I think, at least on, on the left, about you know, what are considered legitimate news organizations on the right, how much you should engage in. You've certainly had your share of sparring with um, and attacks by, say, Fox. I mean, would you be willing to go on Fox? Would you be you know, thinking about how to reach out to that part of the American public? So if I remember correctly, the Newsmax interview, she was doing an event with a host, I believe, that's on Newsmax, and it was, uh, it was a, I, I believe it was an event on cancer, if I'm correct, mm -hmm. and uh, and and so that's how she ended up on Newsmax. Um, look, you know, I think one of the things that we're, we were going to talk about or are going to talk about is democracy and how important it is uh, to be able to to have that free press, independent press, and how, how critical it is to our democracy. It connects, it goes hand in hand. And I think the exercise of being at the podium every day and having 
you know, more than 50 reporters in the room from all stripes, right? Whether it is, uh, it is leans conservative, leans liberal, mainstream, whatever you want to call, uh, uh, call it, uh, it is an exercise of democracy, right? It is an exercise of independent press. It is an exercise of free press. It is an exercise and opportunity uh, for the White House to take questions, as I do, from the press, whether it's hard, whether it's an easy one to answer. And I think that's important, you know? Uh, you have Fox, right, to my, to my right, um, and I take questions from them almost every day. And there are others, Newsmax is in the room as well, further back. And there's, you know, in between as well. And I think that is a process that is so important. That is a process uh, as we talk about our democracy, as we talk about how we have to protect it, strengthen it, how we talk about how we have to protect journalists and make sure that they're able to do the job and allowed to do the job on behalf of, um, of the American people in this instance, it's important. So I think I do that. I think I, I think I already take questions from you know folks from all different all different types of uh, publications, and I think that's important. That's important that I do that almost every day. Um, and so you know, I think that is a, a an exercise that is critical and important. And I'm glad that in this administration we're able to bring that back in a much much more uh, daily. Mm -hmm. Kind of consumption, uh, and also in a way that you know we want to make sure that we are respecting the press, and that's what we have made sure that we have done. That's what something that the president wants us to do. Wouldn't going on some of these outlets reach out to more of Americans who might not say believe the the mainstream media or the or the left leaning media, sort of being much more. Uh, you know, doing interviews with them, going on their shows. You're talking about me in particular? You or, or the administration in general? I think the administration, especially our policy people, um, when you think about our, our National Economic Council, when you think about, um, you know, other policy folks within the administration, they are regularly on all of the networks that we're kind of alluding to here. They are, they are on Fox regularly, they're on Bloomberg and MSNBC, CNN, and you see them just talking through the president's policy, what's happening, whether if he's, in, if he's talking about student loan, uh, whether he's talking about what he's doing for the economy, whether he's talking about uh, you know, any new policy that matters to the American people. And we put them out there specifically because they are the experts and they understand uh, how the policy the president just introduced or laid out or an executive order, how that works. Uh, and honestly, I think it's better to see them than to, to see me. Um, but they're impressive. I think we have an impressive group uh, that, again, they are on regularly laying out what we're doing, sharing our platform, talking about what is it that we're presenting is going to help the lives of the American people. So you were talking uh, about sort of keeping the press vibrant because it's important for democracy. Mm -hmm. Could we get that slide up with the, about the um, funding of journalism organizations? And you know, just before, and you can see, well, you can't see very clearly. The, 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 this is from uh, the Knight Foundation, our friends at Gala. Um, and basically what it says is that most people believe that there should be commercial funding of news organizations. And we just saw Senator Kobuchar talk about the bill, um, you know, wending its way through that would essentially, um, I guess, force uh, news organizations to, um, and, um, uh, and platforms to negotiate so there'd be more money. But what's the administration's view on a, on a bill like that and on just generally trying to keep um, news organizations well-funded? So, so one of the things that the president believes in, in competition, right? He talks about that, uh, and he signed an executive order or making sure that we do that, right? He believes in capitalism, but certainly he doesn't believe um, in, uh, you know, taking advantage of it. And um, that's something that I actually talked about today at the, in the briefing room. One of the things that, the first piece of legislation that this president signed, which was the American Rescue Plan, the American Rescue Plan, as you all know, met a moment in the beginning of the administration when COVID uh, was really just, as we know, ravaging the country. Businesses were closing down, small business, about more than 
100,000 businesses were shut down. Uh, you had schools that were, majority of schools were shut down. And it was, we wanted to make sure that we were getting people shots in arms, getting the vaccines to get things going back, to get the economy going back. There is a part uh, of that piece of legislation that helps small businesses, gives them grant, reopen small businesses. And what we saw is, because of what we were able to do to small businesses, it actually helped local newspapers as well. If you think about advertisement, if you think about what are the things that local newspapers need to survive, so they benefited as well. Uh, look, you know, so that's one thing that we were able to do, um, which is very important. It, it, we understand how important it is to have local news, news organizations. We, we understand how important it is to have those voices of journalists and making sure that information is being pushed out there. We believe sometimes the best way to get our information out there is going to local news, is going to regional news, because it goes right into uh, the homes of Americans who turn on and listening to the evening news. So this is important. We're going to continue to work on this, we're going to continue to see to do the, the work that we need to make sure uh, that they survive. I'm told we're running out of time, and I'm going to sneak one question in. Don't kill me. Okay. Um, no, it's good. Twitter. No. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> How concerned is the administration about this as a place of public discourse? Of I, I believe the president called it a, a, a platform that spews lies all around the world, and I think, I'm not sure how to describe what's going on there right now, but yeah. things are happening. So we've, look, we've all seen the reports. We, you know, we're all watching closely, especially in, in the worlds that we're in. Um, can't really speak too much to it because it's kind of developing in front of our eyes and so don't want to, uh, uh, to make any comments specifically on what's happening, but the president has talked about platforms more broadly. Uh, and how they're being used in a way to spew hate, uh, how they're being used in a way to, to spew violence. And it is an incredibly dangerous time. Uh, it goes back to him talking about democracy, him talking about like where we are as a country. And um, it, it goes into the reason why he even ran for president. If you think about 2017, if you, thought, if you remember what happened in Charlottesville, they you know, saw the, the, the hate, um, even violence, and how horrific that was. Uh, and he talked about soul of a nation. All of that is connected. All of that is connected as to where we are. And he is an optimist. He will say that. He has said that many times in the last couple of days. He believes that we are better than that. He believes that we can heal and get to the other side of it. But we have to fight for it. We have to fight for our democracy. We have to fight to make sure um, that we live up to what we can be. One of the things I just wanted to say before we ended this is, as we all know, Speaker Pelosi stepped down from leadership. And I was listening to what she was saying, and I was listening to, and as we all were watching her speech yesterday, and she talked about essentially how when she looks at the Capitol, it is a temple of democracy, and how important the Constitution is. And those are the things that we should be fighting for. Those are the things that are so important and critical. And listening to her, and she talks about what it means to be an elected official, right? What it means that you're protecting and fighting for it. Yes, it's, the, it's your district. Yes, it's the American people. But there's something kind of bigger than all of us. And if we do not fight for that, you know, we're, who are we are going to be as a country? And so um, th those are the things that have been on my mind the last 24 hours. Good words to end on, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.